In this episode of the Dr. Clay Show, we're going to talk about barefoot style running shoes versus traditional running shoes. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to another episode of the Dr. Clay Show. I'm your lovely host, Dr. Clay Hyde. Now, today what I want to talk about is I want to go over the pros and cons of running in those new uh, barefoot style running shoes. They're relatively new, like Vibram Five Fingers. It's hard to say that without, without doing this. Vibram Five Fingers and the new soon to be released Merrill barefoot shoes. So what they do is they mimic basically barefoot running. It's, it's almost just a, uh, it's like a glove for your foot. And the Vibram Five Finger actually have the five fingers, whereas the Merrill is a open, um, you know, open toe box, I guess you would call it. Anyway, so those versus traditional running shoes where you have a lot of padding, uh, you have kind of stability control, so to speak, and uh, you especially have padding in the heel. And the heel, therefore, is elevated relative to the forefoot. Now, before I go into the pros and cons, I want to back up and tell you a story about how this recently came to the forefront. And it will basically explain uh, all the science of this new, uh, you know, the science behind the barefoot running. So check this out. There was this guy, actually there were two guys that were, that were simultaneously, didn't know each other, um, and they decided to pursue um, the best way to run and the best type of footwear because, and at least one of the guys, I'll talk about one in particular, and I'm just going to summarize the uh, story in 30 seconds. He wondered how these guys in Kenya uh, can run so far, can run at least a marathon a day uh, or more and not have foot problems. They don't have plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, so on and so forth. So he set out, he traveled over there and analyzed the biomechanics, even took a little foot sensor that measured the pressure and so on of how they ran. Now they run with just basically a thick piece of leather on the bottom of their foot, that's it. And they run these long distances, no pain. What he found is they do not do the traditional heel strike where your heel hits the ground and then you roll. They don't run like that. But in one, it will be too jarring with, the, with no padding. When your heel hit the ground, it would jar your teeth. They land on their forefoot with their, uh, the forefoot, or the ball of the foot on the ground and the calf complex, the gastrocnemius and the soleus, absorbs the impact. So the people that run, these, I mean, we don't have to do studies on it in a way because these people in Africa have been doing it for generations. They've been running barefoot and they don't have injuries. And like I said, two guys set out, you know, both did this, came to the same conclusion and they're both were totally unbiased guys. Okay, so what they have found is now is that the problem, now let's go over, knowing that, let's go over the pros and cons of a padded shoe. The padded shoe, what it does, initially the design was just to protect the pad of your foot. So protect your skin from friction and to uh, serve as a little bit of padding so that when you're stepping on rocks and twigs and branches and stuff, um, you don't injure your, you know, the, the foot. The, so the skin and the soft tissue right below it is designed to protect that. What happened is for, actually for marketing reasons, mar companies just started, they had to make their shoe fancier, right? So they put more and more padding in, elevated the, the heel with so much padding so it feels comfortable in the store and you buy it and then what happens? We have changed our running style based on the shoes that are available to us. The shoes have not changed because our preferred running style has changed. Does that make sense? We have modified our running style to fit these thick heeled padded stability shoes. What happens then is the stability muscles like the peroneus, the peroneus longus and brevis, these other little muscles, uh, at the, the arch of your foot, for example, it is designed, these ligaments are designed to be a natural shock absorber. Those guys in Kenya that are running, their foot is getting stressed like that. Those stability muscles, the ligaments on the side of your foot, like the deltoid ligament and so on, those things over the years are stressed, uh, they're tensed, uh, you know, stressed and uh, is placed on them, what I mean, and they're placed under uh, tension. Therefore, they grow thick and strong. Therefore, they don't have injuries. 
So what happens with our padded footwear these days, the pro to the, our padded footwear is it protects the bottom of your foot, right? The, the uh, skin and the soft tissue. The con to it is that with the stability control, your stabilizing muscles and stabilizing ligaments do not have to do their job. Therefore, relatively, they're atrophy compared to the people that run barefooted or if you ran barefooted. So that's the pros and got. Pro is it protects the bottom of your foot. The con is it alters your biomechanics so your foot is weaker and then more prone to injury. Quick side note, the, uh, I saw a, a program, uh, it's on HBO, The Real Sports. They interviewed, they had a topic, that's where I saw some of this information. They interviewed some guys at Nike and asked them right to their face, do you have ev uh, research, evidence to support that your shoes protect and reduce the risk of injuries in the consumer? And they said, yes, are Nike free? And the guy goes, but wait, isn't that the one that mimics barefoot running? And they go, uh, yeah, it is. That's from Nike. I mean, it's uh, like I said, you can look it up, the Real, Real Sports episode. Right from their mouth. The only one that prevents injuries is the one that mimics barefoot running. Hello. Okay. So the pros to the uh, barefoot shoe is that it's how we were designed to run. You didn't come out of your mama's womb with that much heel support. And your little foot wasn't designed to be elevated like that. It was designed so that your heel and your forefoot were flat on the ground. All right. Now wrapping it up. Here's where you can go wrong with these shoes, and here's how you need to apply this information. If you've been wearing regular shoes, you would be crazy to immediately jump into wearing the Vibram Five Finger or the Merrill Barefoot shoe all the time because your little tendons and ligaments and the plantar fascia in your foot, it's not used to it. It's going to be stressed and it's going to go, oh, no, what's all this? Therefore, you might get tendonitis and so on. You have to ease into it. So, what I would recommend is you go, this is well, not just my recommendation, it's simply just how the body responds and adapts. You should go from wearing a regular stable type shoe to a moderately padded and moderately uh, stabilized shoe like a Nike Free. So it has moderate padding and support, just a tad of elevation. Do uh, maybe half your time in the regular shoe, half in the Nike Free. Then you could get you some Vibram Five Fingers and then maybe you're wearing them a little bit, run a couple of laps around the track, wear them around the house and so on. And then maybe you drop the regular running shoes and you're wearing the Nike Freeze and the Vibrams a little bit. And then a little bit more in the Vibrams. And then eventually, maybe you'll be able to run in the Vibram Five Finger or the Merrill Barefoot, something like that, exclusively. But guess what? If you're 40 years old and you've been running or walking in padded shoes your whole life, then guess what, the guys in Kenya, they've got 40 year head start on it. it. Realistically, you may never be able to adapt to completely running in barefoot style shoes, but that doesn't mean that they won't benefit you and that you shouldn't spend some time in them. All right, now that I went way over how long I expected to go on this video, but I think it is, um, I think it's important for you guys to, under, you know, to understand that. I know I was enlightened when I learned this because when I went through chiropractic school, we didn't have all this research yet. So we learned all the science and, and so on of the foot, but it, it wasn't known exactly, um, you know, the role and how important um, barefoot style running can be in long-term injury prevention. So it's just something I think you should know. So I took a little time to share it with you. I hope that's cool. Anyway, that's it. Take care, guys. Until next time, I'm Dr. Clay. Mm -hmm.